Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by an English romantic poet and novelist named Charlotte uh, Turner Smith. She lived from 1749 to 1806. And I discovered this poem that I'd never read before in a book that I've mentioned before, Robert Hass's A Little Book on Form and Exploration into the Formal Imagination of Poetry. There's a poem in here called Written in October. It's from 1797. And it is a, um, like I said, it's one that I had never read before. I've, I've read a few things of Charlotte Smith's before. And I'll say a few words about who she was when I'm making my comments on this particular poem. But it being October, you know, it seemed like the right time to read a poem called Written in October. I was kind of leaning towards not doing another autumn poem, just because I don't, you know, I want to just do seasonally themed poems. But I liked this one enough to, to share it with you. And I think that her story is worth sharing as well. So this is Charlotte Smith's Written in October, 1797. The blasts of autumn as they scatter round the faded foliage of another year, and muttering many a sad and solemn sound drive the pale fragments o'er the stubble sear, are well attuned to my dejected mood. Ah, better far than airs that breathe of spring, while the high rooks that hoarsely clamoring seek in black phalanx the half-leafless wood. I rather hear than that enraptured lay harmonious of love and pleasure born, which from the golden firs or flowering thorn awakes the shepherd in the ides of May. Nature delights me most when most she mourns, for never more in me the spring of hope returns. So I wanted to share a uh, paragraph that Richard. Uh, Robert Hass, rather. He shares three sonnets by Charlotte Smith in his chapter called Reading the Sonnet. And then he has this paragraph about her. Quote, Smith married a West Indies merchant who fled England to avoid imprisonment for debt and left her with 12 children to raise, which she set about doing by earning a living as a writer. Her first book of poems, Elegiac Sonnets, were published in 1774. The sonnets are striking in several ways. The freshness and accuracy of description. She might have invented the descriptive sonnet, the relative freedom from poeticisms, a few years ahead of Wordsworth's and Coleridge's efforts to reform the diction of poetry and their intense melancholy. It's amazing that, that Charlotte Smith, you know, she, she was able to make a life for her 12 children after her husband left as a writer as difficult as it would be now, it's that much more impossible for a woman of that time to do that. So that's just so impressive and such, you know, it's an inspiring story. But it's not surprising that her poetry has a sort of melancholy to it, right? Um, that's the word that, that Hass uses, an intense melancholy. So she has this sort of hint of genius and a, and a hint of the things that Coleridge and Wordsworth are going to accomplish. And yet she has so much more going against her than Wordsworth or Coleridge experienced. So to have a poem, to have several poems that, that lasted, that withstood the test of time, is a, is a kind of a miraculous thing. And it's amazing that her, or it's a testament rather to her skill and to her uh, ingenuity and to her creativity as a poet, that she defeated the odds, she beat the odds, and she today is a poet that we still read. Although probably we should read her a little bit more than we do. On Wikipedia, it says, interestingly, quote, she initiated a revival of the English sonnet, helped establish conventions of Gothic fiction, and wrote political novels of sensibility. She published 10 novels, three books of poetry, four children's books, and other assorted works over the course of her career. I mean, that is, a, that is an incredible thing, given everything that was against her. Um, and I just wanted to uh, recognize her for the, uh, for the writer she is. Now, I did not get into the poem specifically a lot, but I think there is a lot for you to think about and chew on here, especially as an, as an autumn poem. But I did want to just kind of, the first time I read her on this podcast, I did kind of want to give her a shout out for, for what she accomplished. And in the future, I'll read some more poems from her and we'll get into you know, some of the things that she was doing. This podcast being a short one, I can only say so many things, but you know, so shout out to Charlotte Smith. Here once again is written in October, 1797. The blasts of autumn as they scatter round the faded foliage of another year 
and muttering many a sad and solemn sound, drive the pale fragments o'er the stubble sear, are well attuned to my dejected mood. Ah, better far than airs that breathe of spring. While the high rooks, that hoarsely clamoring, seek in black phalanx the half-leafless wood, I rather hear than that the enraptured lay harmonious of love and pleasure born, which from the golden firs or flowering thorn awakes the shepherd in the ides of May. Nature delights me most when most she mourns, for never more in me the spring of hope returns. This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Mm-hmm.